Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video should be equal parts very fun and probably very, very embarrassing. That's right, today I'm going to be reacting to one of my very old videos. Funny thing about being a YouTuber for over 10 years is that I unfortunately have a huge library of a lot of cringe-worthy videos. On the one hand, it's fun to see what I enjoyed and loved at the time. But obviously, through time, I'm sure my opinions have also changed. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. That's right, today I'm going to be reacting to one of my favorite books of the year videos, but from many, many years ago, specifically 2015. 2015, I was a sophomore in college, very addicted to wearing bright lipstick, and for the most part, yelled in all of my videos. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start this video and begin reacting to it. And we'll see if my reading tastes have changed or evolved at all, or if I stand by these favorite books. Hey guys, it's Reagan, and today we are kidding about the yelling. <laughs> a very important video, because guess what? It's the end of the year, so it can only mean one thing. I'm about to talk about my favorite books that I read in 2015. Just to give you a bit of statistics, I read a total of 71 books this year. I read 71 books in the midst of my sophomore year of college while working? Who was I? Did I sleep? Unclear. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first novel on my list I'm going to talk about is Tatiana and Alexander. This is book two to the Bronze Horseman Historical Fiction Trilogy. Okay, so the first one <laughs> I completely forgot about. Um, so yes, back in the day I did read the Bronze Horseman Trilogy. This is a historical romance series set during World War II. Reading this as a very young adult, I was definitely very much swept away by it. Um, now, upon reflection and just growing with age, this book does have a lot of problematic romantic tropes from an overbearing main male love interest, abuse, both emotional and psychological. Um, I loved it at the time, but I think with time and space, I've kind of grown apart from the series, and this isn't really a series I show off or recommend much on my channel anymore. But it was one of my first intros to like romance, particularly historical romance, and I love historical romance so much, but I wouldn't say that this is a current favorite at all. So starting off the video strong. All right, let's move on to the next book. This time YA and that is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. This is another novel set during World War II. It follows the Lithuanian refugee exodus uh, that Stalin did. It was just a really powerful and well-written young adult novel following a very tragic piece of history and I thought it was just very well executed. It stuck with me and it's definitely a book I will want to reread and revisit in the future. I stand by this recommendation. It's honestly been too long since I've read a Ruta Sepetys book. I feel like I would enjoy all of her books, probably about or relatively about the same to this day. This particular book I believe was my first of her works that I picked up and it was incredibly emotional. I remember sobbing. It was also in large part my first introduction to this topic, learning about this very truly terrible time in history. Ruta Sepetys writing is beautiful, it's lyrical, but it'll also kind of like catch your heart too because again the topics that she tends to explore within her historical fiction novels are not easy ones to read but also incredibly important and impactful. And this is one I would still definitely stand by. Um, not only at the time I read it, this was an excellent book, but I would recommend this book to this day, especially um, in the young adult category in general. This is a very good young adult novel. Next up we have a science fiction novel. Was I kidding about the yelling thing? <laughs> and that is The Martian by Andy Weir. This is a novel that I absolutely devoured. It was so fantastically funny and it came out as a movie this year. But specifically this novel follows our main character who is on a mission to Mars. Everything is going as planned but then a massive sandstorm hits and the, him and his entire crew have to evacuate immediately. During this evacuation some complications happen making the whole crew believe our main character is actually dead. Surprise! He is very much alive and now he has to figure figure out how to survive on Mars. Mars is really far away. The thing is insightful. <laughs> <laughs> about this novel that I just really appreciated was its balance of science and humor. Okay, The Martian. I stand by this book too. The funny thing about this book, I got this book in 2015, I read this book in 2015, and this was actually a gift from Clay when we first started dating, um, which is so funny to think about now given how many years have since passed and we're now married. The Martian was probably one of my first forays into adult sci-fi writing, and I read it in large part because Clay got it for me, and I'm not sure I would have 
read it so soon if it wasn't a gift and I really liked it and it really introduced me to this genre and really empowered me to check out other adult sci-fi works. I still stand by The Martian. I think this is the strongest of the Andy Weir books I have read and I really liked the movie too. It really does combine elements of like hard science and humor very very effectively. It's also a very dark concept and I feel like the author balance and the dark and light elements of this book really well and structurally how it's written it's very compulsive um it's written kind of like a diary entry it's very stream of consciousness I hear the audiobook in particular is very very excellent but yeah it's about a guy left on Mars and he has to survive there four years and truthfully I could not put it down I read it quickly and I still definitely recommend this book honestly two out of three so far not bad. Next on my list is a fan favorite and that is going to be of course Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. Oh Sarah J Maas in the early parts of my YouTube channel definitely go hand in hand. The Throne of Glass series was just one of the most foundational fantasy series I was reading at the time in terms of developing my own taste as a reader and a reviewer. So this series definitely has a special place in my heart. Um Let's see what I say about it. I debated quite a bit about having this on my list, but ultimately I loved the book, I loved the series, and I couldn't not include it amongst all these other fantastic novels. This of course is the fourth novel to the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I obviously can't go very much into the plot, but I will say, and a lot of people will also say, when you get to the fourth novel so much has happened and the world has grown so much, and that's why this book is really great. It's kind of the turning point for a lot of things. Finally, a lot of action happened and the politics and the plot are moving forward at light speed and this novel was like the tipping stone for all of that. It's huge, but it read so quickly because there's just like one page after another, you're just like, what is happening? The Throne of Glass series, I would say I'm rather torn about in terms of if I still stand by to this day. I think as an introductory fantasy series, particularly in the YA genre, it probably holds up pretty well. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely some problematic elements to this series and elements of it are definitely monikers of the time in terms of when it was released. And probably there are better YA fantasy series out there now. I have actually had a bit of a craving to go back and reread this series to see where I stand with it. Um, now because obviously when I read it it was like my favorite thing in the entire world it was so compulsive and fast-paced and the growth of this series was one I hadn't really experienced it started off kind of as a typical YA setup but the plot really balloons and the world's really cracked open lots of new characters conflict multi POV all of these concepts were just sort of introduced to me for the first time not to mention it did have a lot of really fun romances as well. Again, I loved it and I've read the entire series um, as they were released at the time and I think it only wrapped up like four or five years ago, but I'm really curious to revisit it because I've never actually reread Throne of Glass since I read it for the first time, like eight or nine years ago at this point. With that in mind, I stand by this being a fun and entertaining series. Would I put it in my top 10 favorite fantasy series of all time? No but I kind of want to reread it. Would that be fun to watch? Let me know. All right, moving on to book five. The next novel I'm going to talk about is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is another historical fiction fantasy-esque novel set in Barcelona post-World War II. It follows a boy who is taken to this place called the, uh, the Library of Lost Books by his father, and he's told by his father to take one book and protect it with his life. He picks a novel called The Shadow of the Wind, and he reads it and is fascinated by it, and he is drawn to find other books by this author as well. Well, he finds, however, that all of this author's works are slowly being destroyed systematically one by one. Here's the deal, the synopsis of this book is so good. It has so many good selling points to it. My friend Max actually gifted me this book this year. I completely forgot this is the year I read this book. I love this book. This book is amazing. But let's, I'm curious what my thoughts were and then I'll talk about it a bit more. First off, the writing is absolutely beautiful, but the thing that really drove me through this book so quickly was the mystery itself. It is definitely a book for book lovers, but it's also eerie. Like I said, as the character starts to realize the similarities between his life and the novel that he loves so much, you are like, what the crap is going on? And you have to figure out the ending. So The Shadow of the Wind is an amazing book. I'm also feeling like this is one of my first introductions to like historical ambiance adult 
fantasy and this book was like a literary delight. The writing style and just the overall ambiance and atmosphere of this book makes it impossible to put down. The concept of this young boy picking out this book, realizing that all the other versions of this book are being destroyed and his life begins to mirror the book itself has a compelling and dark mystery to it. I flew through this book and I was just amazed by how beautifully written it was and just how absolutely immersive the experience of this book was. It's still on my bookshelf to this day. It's right there. I love this book. Still highly recommend this book. Absolutely. Still a favorite for sure. You know, it's funny. I think this is the year where I really ventured out of some of my literary comfort zones and included a lot more fiction and like adult fiction than I had previously read before. So let's just let's see. I'm going to be talking about The Enchanted by Renee Denfield. Yeah. This is a very short literary fiction novel that honestly just stuck with me for a variety of reasons. This is a magical realism novel following a personified prison set in a kind of unspecified date. The narrator in this story is omnipresent. That's how you say that, right? And he uh, accounts for all the lives of this prison, including the prison of itself, from a disavowed priest to a woman working to help get men off death row by investigating in their past lives. The story is absolutely fascinating and riveting, very, very dark, and honestly gave me some very new perspective on prisons themselves. So yeah, this book is amazing. <laughs> I love Renee Denfeld. I love her writing. And again, another kind of introduction to literary fiction. Um, this book is so good. Again, it follows a personified prison and predominantly you're following our main character who is on death row. It's emotional. It's very, very harrowing. It really looks into a lot of the systemic issues surrounding prison and incarceration in general. And it has a really empathetic view on our main character who we know is on death row. Again, a large part of reading this book is through the perspective of the prison itself. It's a very haunting tale. It's very short. I read it incredibly quickly and yeah, I should read more books by Renee Dunfield. On my list is another literary fiction, oh. but a little less depressing, and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Did I just have like the best reading year of my life? I read so many books that have stayed with me to this day in 2015. I did not even, I did not even realize. This was a great reading year. Okay, go off. Well, amongst the people who have read it because it's just so much fun and it's just so interesting. This novel has a lot of different viewpoints and a lot of different time periods, but everything ultimately is very connected, which makes it so interesting. It follows the world on the eve of the world ending, essentially, because a contagion is killing everyone. But think about reading this book pre-2020, you know? It also follows a group of individuals who have survived the contagion, and they are now a traveling troupe of theater goers. They, you know, like perform Macbeth and Shakespearean plays for entertainment of these new, in this new world. So yeah, Station Eleven. I've read this book now multiple times since I read it for the first time in 2015. I've read all of Emily St. John Mandel's work. I really still wholeheartedly enjoy her writing style. She's one of my favorite authors of right now. And then I one th if you haven't read Station Eleven, you should 1000% do so. There's also a TV adaptation of this book now that's incredibly excellent too. Encountering Emily St. John Mandel's writing was really foundational for me at the time. This sort of tapestry of experience that she's able to create was one that was mesmerizing and just pulled me in. The switch back and forth between the two timelines, pre and post contagion, and also just the picture she created of humanity that was ultimately like really positive, like the light within the darkness that humanity was able to create despite going through so much trauma. Um, it was a really inspiring and motivational read. Again, rereading this post 2020 was a very interesting experience as well. Clay also has read and loved this book. Yeah, Station Eleven, absolute favorite. Next up is a novel I read at the beginning of last year. I think it was the first book I completed in the year 2015 and it has stuck with me all year because oh. I absolutely freaking love it. <laughs> and it is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. Now this is a science fiction novel that doesn't really deal with space travel but instead deals with the concept of time. Why was my taste so good in 2015? I love this book too. This had to have been like the greatest reading year of my life. 71 books? All of these books for the most part. I still would recommend and do recommend and would still read. What is going on? It follows our main character, Harry August, who has a very peculiar ability, and that is to essentially, he lives his life, he dies, he wakes up and lives his life all over again, but with all the past memories he had in his previous lives. But on his eve, I believe of his 11th life or something along those lines, someone comes to him and he's dying. 
and someone tells them the world is ending and you need to figure out why. So this book is so good. It's it's a sci-fi thriller, I would describe it. Claire North is really good about this and I've read a lot of Claire North since reading the first 15 Lives of Harry August. She basically creates a protagonist with a very unusual, that is usually also very, very isolating for them from the rest of the world. And for Harry August, he lives his life over and over again, but still retaining all of the memories from his previous lives. So the guy, has a lot of world experience, let's just say. Outside of this just being an unusual existence, this quickly turns into a thriller because the world is ending, as we just learned, and he has to figure out what's going on. He has rivals, it's just conceptually such a great idea and the execution and the thriller elements of this will just hook you immediately. I actually remember the reading experience of this. I was at my parents house. I stayed up till like 3 a.m. finishing this book. Again, another book I still own on my bookshelf, which I think is impressive given how many times I've moved. Um, this, this book alone has been in like six different apartments slash this residence in general. Um, so yeah, I love it. I love it still. I should reread it. Uh, but yeah, also stand by this. I'm telling you, 2015, she had taste. My favorite fantasy series that I'm caught up oh. on this year. Favorite fantasy series of 2015. What could it be? What could it be? I actually have no idea. <laughs> and that is the Queen of the Tearling trilogy by Erica Johansson. I Amazing. <laughs> read the first two books of this trilogy this year and fell in love. The Queen of the Tearling is a fantastic young adult hybrid fantasy series that I just loved. It follows our main character Kelsey as she comes to age at the age of 17 and she's forced to kind of regain her kingdom. This novel is very political heavy and it has amazing strong female characters who are independent and just absolutely amazing. It has a very interesting timeline. Basically it is kind of a regressed future society meaning it is in the future and it's fantasy. They have magic and all these things and yet they make references to our current time. So yeah, this series is so good. Um, I think I described in the video that it could be considered YA. I disagree with that personally. I think this is very much adult fantasy, but I think in this time period, like new adult was a very new genre and adult fantasy novels with young female protagonists in particular often were labeled as YA. It was kind of a messy time period and that could be an entirely different video for another day. But The Queen of the Tearling, so good. Um, and if you haven't read this, it is a ride. I feel like it really presents itself as a classic high fantasy story about a young girl having to take on the burden of power and maintain power despite a lot of political players trying to steal it from her. It's very intense. She doesn't know who to trust, all of these things. Kind of also a coming of age story, but it has so much more to it than that. As I sort of hinted at, it is set in sort of a regressed future society, meaning it has references to our current world, but it's like there are castles and all of these things. So it feels very medieval, but yet there are references to our existence. So I think trying to parse out this mystery is so satisfying. And as you get further along in the series, how all of this develops is just so cool. And I think as a combination of things, Erica Johansson is incredibly successful creating not only a very unique story, but one that will shock you numerous times. So yeah, I still have this too. Where is it? It's right up there. And the second book definitely delves into world more. So if you're like, read the first one and you're like, but I want more world building. You get the world building later. I loved this series so much. Perhaps it has some predictable plot points, but I literally don't care because I loved everything about it. And that's why I made my list. It's so good. And it's gonna be a movie with Emma Watson in it, so. Was it a movie with Emma Watson? Did that ever come out? Was that, that, that was canceled, wasn't it? Favorite book of the year I read last month and really shouldn't be a surprise if you think about it. My favorite book of the year? And that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rolfes. I finally read it and yes, I loved it. Seeing how it's my favorite book of the year. If I could only go back in time and tell her to not pick up the series because girl, you're still waiting. <laughs> for that next installment. We are still waiting. Follows a man in the start of the novel. He's basically in a tavern and he's chronicling his life for a chronicler, he's called. And the first novel follows this man's life from his early years to about his teens when he's at university studying. It is just amazing. There's some, it was, it was like, felt like home. It was rum it just felt really lovely. I just had a lot of great feelings while reading it. And all of that aside, of course, the writing was fantastic. The plot was divine. I was enthralled the entire way through. And honestly, the tropes that were present in the story are some of my favorite. Okay, so Name of the Wind, favorite book of the year. So it's funny, through time, I still would say I enjoyed this book quite a bit, but I feel like my enjoyment towards the Name of the Wind has waned slightly with the more high fantasy novels I have read. 
I still really enjoy the setup and concept of this, the sort of present day reflecting back on the past, how did we get to this moment, which is used uh, by our main character Kavoth as he's sort of narrating his past. Structurally, I really enjoy that. And the fact that it also has a magic school university setting is a lot of fun. Um, there are some like stereotypical tropes definitely at play here and Kavoth is definitely boy genius, perfect main character. And the female character writing in this series is probably not the greatest if i'm being honest but i also just feel like given the delay within this series it's hard for me to like look at it with the same amount of heart eyes because it's just one of those things where i just don't know if it's ever going to actually culminate in an ending like i don't know where we're gonna go i don't know when this is gonna come out obviously i did enjoy it it used to be in my top 10 favorite fantasy series it's moved down a bit i still definitely recommend it but i would say read at your own risk because i don't know if it's ever gonna end the writing style is great Honestly, guys, that is the end of my video. I am shook. I was expecting to be like watching this video, like making fun of past 2015 Reagan, saying all of our book choices are awful, terrible taste, look at where I am now. Um, and I'm sure I read some books I wouldn't stand by that year. And I'm sure there's other favorite videos where I don't stand by those books. But I think 2015 was just like one of the greatest reading years of my life. I read so many foundational novels to my taste to this day some of my all-time favorites that i still have on my shelf i'm honestly like shocked shocked and i really shouldn't have been so hard on 2015 me she was doing better than like 2023 me if i'm being honest um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i think it's really fun to reflect and think back on books and opinions on books let me know if you want to see another version of this video i have many that i could use but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you soon with another one soon goodbye